And hello again. Surprise, it's me again. Um, this is our shorter version uh, of a new concept for our astigmatic lenses. Uh, and it mainly refers to and mainly applies to front surface toric lenses, but mostly soft toric lenses. So what we're going to do is we're going to share this and this here. This is where we left off in our, it's all in one PowerPoint that way, uh, but the lectures are broken up. Uh, so we did this last time about when to use a toric lens and what type of toric GP. But for front surface torques and soft toric lenses, remember, we saw that video earlier. If I go all the way through, let's put this, this lens again. If the whole idea between an astigmatic lens, a lens that has astigmatism, um, I'm not sure why I can't skip this. Oh, there we go. Skip ad. Not that I don't want to help folks out, but so if the idea be behind a toric contact lens is that we're going to put one power in one part of the eye and another part and another power in the other part, they have to stay set. They can't rotate. It has to stay in this orientation all the time. Well, we can't have this. If I needed one power here, let's say we needed that black at the very top at 12 o'clock. If we look at it at a clock hour, 12, 3, 6, 9. This has changed so dramatically that they only see well one very small part of the time. We can't let this lens spin. So if we're going to keep it from spinning, how do we do that? Well, we talked in the last lecture about uh, prism ballasts. And a prism ballast is a design uh, that will make the bottom part thicker. And interestingly, or in the years uh, when I started, they thought it was because it weighed more. They thought gravity took that lens and they put the thicker part, obviously, was down like a pendulum, so that would bring it down. But it turns out that that was not the case because it turns out that they can still orient themselves if you're upside down or if you're in space or what have you. It's not a gravity thing. It turns out that it's the pressure between your upper lid and the thicker part just like a watermelon seed if you spin it at some point it's going to sort of squeeze out and wherever it pushes the thick edge out it's you're trying to press it out you're actually using like a watermelon seed effect between the cornea and your upper eyelid and it squeezes it down so if I have a gas permeable lens I can put a prism ballast on the bottom if I have a gas permeable lens I can also cut a small part of the bottom off like put a little ledge there and a truncation looks like this. It's and, and remember, only GPs can be truncated. And it simply looks like, and I thought I had a photo. Mm -mm -mm. And sorry about that, uh, there's a little like mess up. Um, so if you looked here, take a look at this lens and it's a little difficult to visualize, but the whole lens should be perfectly symmetrical. And when you get to the bottom, there's this little ledge. This here is gonna create a little ledge along the bottom lid to keep it oriented. And the prism ballast looks a little bit like this. This is very pronounced, obviously. They put a thick base down prism. And what's going to happen is this upper lid is sort of going to close this tension is going to push the thicker part down and using this it's going to orient the lens hopefully orient it perfectly and again gas permeables you can do prism ballast or truncation soft we call it prism ballast but there's a lot of different types of designs and, and I won't get into that but for lack of a better for, for, for our purposes for right now uh, we are essentially going to just call it a prism ballast for now and we'll get into the specifics later. So the problem is we want this lens and, and different manufacturers uh, let me just make sure this is here. Good. Uh, different manufacturers will actually have different markings on their lens uh, and they'll look somewhat like 
some have a little lens at six o'clock some will have one at three and nine and we look at it on a, on a, on a lens like if it's a clock so 12 would be up top three would be to the right six would be on the bottom and nine would be over here and we have to start getting those clock hours some have one at six and three and nine some would have in 12 and six look at your manufacturers and everyone will be different however the idea is we put the lens in it should orient in such a way that it looks just like this this is at six this is at six and five and seven this is at three and nine this is at they look nice and straight there's a problem though because based on lens anatomy based on your lid anatomy every once in a while you put a lens on and it doesn't align properly it gets a little crooked well I'll get into that if the contact lenses matches the vertex spectacle uh, prescription and the lens orients properly so the we put a astigmatic toric design on here and it should match up where it needs to be it should work so if I had a minus one with a minus 225 axis 180 and I put a contact lens and let's just call it a soft lens for now but it works the same for soft front surface torix and if I put it a minus one minus 125 axis 180 contact lens and it oriented perfectly we're in good shape what happens if I had a minus seven with a minus four sill axis 180 and I gave them a 650 with a 325 at 180 you should automatically look at and say seven vertex down is a 650 and a minus 11 vertex down if you look at your chart should be about a 10 and a quarter this power on the contact and the eyeglass lens is this for the contact lens and look at your chart and this is a minus 325 uh, just to be specific actually I'll add that because I don't want to be exact and this orients at six o'clock this should work very well there's a problem with toric lenses front surface toric GPs or soft toric lenses what happens if it centers well and it they blink and it moves well and everything's great except the mark was not at six o'clock it rotated over um, that means the prescription we needed to put on the lens power was in a certain orientation but when you put it on the lens on the eye it was supposed to orient a certain way but now it's crooked it's twisted it's the powers are in the wrong place it doesn't work the lens has to be where it's supposed to be and if it's not we have to make an adjustment and that is where we get Lars this is super 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 crazy 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 important left add right subtract if the lens is oriented incorrectly we use Lars and it simply means left LA left add right subtract what does that mean well note the cylinder axis of the spectacle prescription uh, ignore the trial lens I don't care what lens we put on their eye I only want to look at the eyeglass prescription period 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 this is super important because I'm gonna throw curveballs at you all day long Note how much the lens has rotated to the left to the right makes no difference uh, and we're looking at the bottom of the lens I'm actually gonna put that here and if the lens the bottom of the lens rotates clockwise or to the left we're going to add an amount equal to uh, how much it's changed to the axis of the spectacle prescription if it shifts to the right we're going to subtract and this will give you the right lens to order so let's look at one right here um, and we'll do the math but then I'll show you the, the demonstration on what we're doing on our handout so spectacle prescription minus one minus 125 axis 20 we're going to give them a trial lens and to be honest with you I don't care what the trial lens is let's say it was a minus one with a minus 125 axis 20 that's fine let's say it was a minus one minus 125 axis 10 because we didn't have the 20 in stock minus one minus 125 axis 30 I don't care ignore what lens you put just look at the eyeglass prescription and put the lens on and if you see the lens rotates to the left by 10 degrees left add 
right subtract. Well, if it twisted clockwise to the left by 10 degrees, we're going to add 10 to this number. So this is going to be a minus 1, minus 125, axis 30. If it rotates to the right by 30 degrees, If it rotates to the right, left, add, right, subtract. So in this case, minus 1, minus 125, axis. And if I subtract 30 from 20, well, if I subtract 20 from 20, I'll get my 0 or 180. But if I subtract 10 more, it's going to go down to 170. So this is, uh, I'm going to stop you here because I want to revisit our Blackboard handout. And I'll show you what this looks like in person. And, and that's why this handout's so important. All right, so I just clicked on our Blackboard real quick. And we're going to go to my Lars note sheet or handout. And this, I feel, is better than our even our slides because we get to look at it. So I'm going to walk you through it real quick. And then I'd like you to look at this on your own. And we'll go through it one by one. So a soft torque lens or a gas permeable front surface torque, we want the lens to be here. So if we put any type of prescription in, let's say this is a minus one, minus uh, with a 125 sill, so a minus one and a 225, axis 180, right where these lens crosses is, this is what the power is in this lens. And if I put it on the eye, we want the lens to go on the eye and stay straight just like such. So if the lens settles in the proper orientation, Let's use this one, 3 with a 125 sill, axis 180. And we put a 3 with a 125 sill in 180 in this contact lens. And we put the lens in, well, if the lens lines up and it's in front of the eye like it's supposed to be, then they'll see really well. This is a right eye. Here's the contact lens that would go on their eyeball. And everything's oriented properly. Remember, the astigmatism and the prescription has to line up with what the doctor asks, with what this patient needs. In this case, it does. If, however, this lens rotated to the left. Now, this and this should have been lined up with this cross here where they needed it, but they don't line up anymore, and they're not going to see well. And when I talk about the left, look at the bottom of this lens, and did this little mark go to the left, or did it go to the right? It went to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure this using our slit lamp, or in a test question, we'll give you the mount. And if I said this rotated to the left by 10 degrees, left add, right subtract. Well, this left by 10 degrees, add it to the 180, minus 3, minus 125, axis 10 is the trial lens we're going to use. Left add, right subtract. If it rotated to the right, in this case, again, this and this needed to line up with this cross here, and they don't. We need to make an adjustment. And in this case, let's call this 20 degrees to the right. Either we'll measure it or I'll give it to a test question. Left, add, bottom, did it go left or did it go right? This little thing went to the right by 20 degrees. Left, add, right, subtract. We're going to subtract 20 degrees from the 180, minus 3, minus 125, axis 60, 160. Now, here's a curveball. Let's say I had a trial lens and the axis that was different just because I didn't have the lens in stock that day. And it's a soft lens and I just picked it off the shelf and it wasn't the right one, but I just wanted to put it on to see how it felt, to see how it oriented, and then we can order the right lens accordingly. And so their prescription is a 3, 125, 80, 180. The trial lens I pulled should have been a minus 3, minus 125 axis, 170, so I threw it on there. Ignore... Now the lens rotated 20 degrees to the right. The orientation is above 20 degrees to the right. In this case, this 170 is immaterial. Ignore. If I throw something at you here, it's a distraction. You only worry about the axis in the prescription. Left add, right subtract. It's to the right by 20 degrees. 20 degrees subtract from the eyeglass prescription. So the new trial will be a minus 3, minus 125, axis 160. 
use the spectacle prescription, darn it, not the trial lens axis because I could use a 160, a 170, a 180, a 10, a 20. They all should rotate the exact same way relative to the eye, but we wouldn't change it based on all the multiple different types. It only is based on the prescription and the orientation. If the lens is rotated based on where it's supposed to be, this is what we're using. So please keep that in mind. I'm gonna, you'll see that on the NCLE, I bet. You'll see it on my tests. So don't be fooled if I throw you this curveball. Um, and that's it. That was a, a very important issue. I want you to use this video. I want you to use this handout and we'll give you some examples. And now we'll uh, start getting into actually putting the soft lenses on pretty soon in lab. Uh, that's it for today. This was a short one. We had the longer video. I apologize. I try to keep those under 30 minutes. The last one was 45 minutes. This one, well, much shorter, just short and sweet, and off you go to the race. This was only 15. So I appreciate it. Let's go through these. As always, if you have any questions, email me, and we'll post that homework, and uh, we'll give you about a week to finish it, and we'll talk to you in a bit. Thanks for your time today.